How's it going everybody? I'm American Dan and this is a product review from Wings and Rex. Today we're taking a look at the Beam Eye Tracker. If you remember a video I did uh, back in June when I returned from FS Expo 2024, I had mentioned the Beam Eye Tracker and showed the little preview thing that they had there at the Expo. In this video we're going to take an in-depth look at the product. And we're going to determine what's better. VR, which I know, Quest 2 headset, not the greatest, but hey, it works. And I do enjoy flying VR. But my problems with VR usually come from the fact that I have a lot of peripherals. I've got a throttle, I've got radio panels, I've got multiple screens, a yoke, and switches and stuff. And a lot of time in VR... Um, it's real hard sometimes you gotta you know look underneath the headset to find your buttons or whatever and yeah I know there's augmented reality but to me in my opinion that just it looks a little funny and it takes away from some of the immersion so depending on what type of flying I'm doing VR isn't always an option is there a good alternative well be my tracker is an alternative to VR so let's go ahead and take a look here at the Beam Eye Tracker. Okay, so here's the main web page for the Beam Eye Tracker. Let's see what they have to say here. It says, Don't dive into the ultimate gaming immersion with our webcam eye tracking software designed for integrated, seamless integration with OpenTrack. This AI powered eye tracker for PC gamers unlocks 6DOF head tracking, eye tracking capabilities in over 200 PC games, expanding your field of view for the most immersive experience yet. It goes into a little bit of how um, the AI and everything works and there's a, a YouTube video here that demos how that's tracking the person's eyeball. Uh, no webcam, no problem. Apparently you can turn your iPhone into a webcam if uh, if you need to. I have uh, just using a standard uh, 4K webcam. And it also does things beyond gaming. Um, we're not going to get into that here. We're going to focus on how this works with Flight Sim. So what you got to do here, um, you got to get Beam. Um, you can either buy the standalone software or you can get it on Steam. I use the standalone stuff. I have already purchased it, so um, you just follow the prompts and stuff on the screen here if you uh, if you want to purchase it. There's two options for purchase. You can pay the one-time uh, $29.99 fee for lifetime use, or there is a, a monthly subscription option that also helps uh, support the uh, development of the software. You will download for Windows, or whatever works best for you. I've already done this, so as you can see, there's a number one there. So we'll just go ahead and cancel that out. All right, so once you download it, you go through the real quick uh, setup process here. It'll say install instead of repair because I already have it installed. And then once you get it installed, it'll say finish. Go ahead and click finish. And then you'll have a desktop icon like this one that says Be My Tracker. And then you get this uh, small window that comes up to use it for Microsoft Flight Simulator 2020 or for X-Plane. You need to make sure you got your... Uh, game extensions turned on. I'm not going to go through the calibration here, um, but you do want to do that before you get started. The other thing you also need to do is download the OpenTrack software. This is what the eye tracker runs off of. And that is this little program here. As 
and then you'll set up whatever camera here um, for the beam eye tracker and then your output they recommend you use free track 2.0 enhanced i don't know if that's required um you can play around with your settings and figure out whatever works best for you these are some different filters that help kind of filter out some natural movement that you may not notice but when you're uh, watching it uh, you can see that your eyeballs move more than uh, you'd think they do a couple of caveats here on my setup with the beam eye tracker they recommend that you don't use a monitor larger than the, like i think it's 40 inches i'm using a 50 inch flat screen tv as my monitor um, so things are a little bit different for me but i was able to uh, tune things to to make it work so you might have to do some adjustment depending on your specific hardware but if you can see here if i hit start tracking and i move my head you can see that the octopus moves in relation to my head movement now my camera my camera is mounted on close to the bottom of my screen which is one of the options you can have it on the top of your screen but because i'm using a 55 inch tv the top of my screen is pretty far up there so this is has it all set up once you've done all that um you'll see here you can make different profiles for different programs or different different flight sims that you're using um, once you go into options there's a couple things you want to get started before you uh, attempt to make this work in your flight sim. The first one is you want a button to center your your view. So I've I've chosen to use the plus on my number pad because it's an empty key. And the other one I chose to do was track um, tracking toggle tracking, which is turning it on and off. And I use the the minus key for that. And we'll get into that here shortly. The first time you do it you'll go to game detection and once you've got your game loaded and you hit the plus sign it'll show up with what game you're using and then you can assign a profile for it you can change the responsiveness and the uh, some other different things here that make it a little bit smoother for you it is recommended to um make basic changes in the beam software here if you go to settings you can make some changes there but it uh, they do recommend on their website that if you're, you want to fine-tune it you want to fine-tune through the open um, track software you'll notice here that I have only head tracking selected and that is for me I found that the eye tracking was just a little too too much of this because I guess I do a little too much crazy eyes looking around while I'm while I'm flying and it got to be a little nauseating so I played around with it a bit and found that the best one for me was just to do the head tracking and I made a couple adjustments here and I also turned off the uh, head tilt rotation so if you kind of look over here and you turn your head on your your flight sim your panel doesn't uh, doesn't change on you again that's just my personal preference you can change any of the other screens that uh, you want to to make it do it what you want i also turned off the uh, tracking overlay because i don't need the little circle showing where my eyeballs are tracking so that's the basic setup and then you just want to leave this stuff running in the background let's go ahead and open up the uh, flight sim and we'll see it in action okay so here we are loaded up in Havana Cuba we've got the Honda jet here as an example I have it turned on to show that it does work outside the aircraft if you move your head here you can see up and down it's a little jolty I do have to fine-tune some settings here to get it a little bit smoother but as an example it does pretty good in showing what it can do go to the uh, cockpit of the aircraft we can center our view by hitting our center button and that'll start us out centered here and then we can look down and look all over the 
the cockpit here. It's really nice when you're flying planes that have like an overhead panel up here and you don't have to do the whole drag your mouse and change your view thing. It's also good if you want to take a quick look at your FMC here. And the other thing I really like is that you can turn it off. So if you're looking at another screen or you're messing with something on a tablet over here or you're turning knobs and you don't want your view to change, you can turn it off. That's something you can't do in standard VR is you can't go from a non-VR environment to a VR environment. So this is a great compromise. The other thing I enjoy is you can take a drink without having to worry about knocking your headset or making a mess. Can't go wrong with coffee. So um, I think just to demonstrate it in the air, what I'll do is I'll go ahead and I'll get the plane started and uh, we'll do a takeoff and fly around for just a minute to uh, take a look in the air and that will probably be the uh, conclusion of the video. Alright, and that's about the center line or as close as I ever get. Takeoff power set, it's beeping at me because my trim is a little off. There's 90 knots, 100 knots. All right, and as you can see, as we're flying around here, we'd set the autopilot, we can look around. Um, there's not really much else I can uh, demonstrate here other than you can go out to the outside view and look around and do the same thing. Uh, not as steady and smooth as the drone camera, but hey, it works in a pinch. So that is our demonstration of the BMI tracker. Okay, so that concludes our look at the beam eye tracker i have to say i'm very impressed with the technology i think if i spend a little bit more time fine-tuning some settings both inside the simulator and inside the eye tracking software i can make it even smoother but it is a great alternative to using a vr headset uh, like i said before um, it allows you the use of all your peripherals without having to peek under the headset, uh, you can take a drink or grab a snack or something in flight without uh, knocking yourself against the headset because you can't see outside. In my opinion, this is a wonderful product for the $29.99. It's definitely worth it just for the fact that even if you don't use it throughout the whole flight, you're able to toggle it and look down at a button, hit a button, or look down somewhere else and do something without having to have a bunch of pre-programmed views or mess around with dragging the view. I hope you guys enjoyed the video. If you did, please remember to like and subscribe. There is a link in the description below for the Beam Eye Tracker. If you use that link, it does help out the channel and I appreciate everyone that has done it and I appreciate everybody that has used the Say Intentions link, which I'll also put in the description below. This is a small channel. I'm trying to grow it. We're doing the best that we can and having fun with it. And I appreciate everyone that's along for the ride. Thanks for watching the video. Until next time, see you later.